we have trials and tribulations in this world. But all we need to do is trust in Jesus in every situation. Give it to him. Let go of it. Quit hanging on to it. Release it. Don't fear like you need to hold on to it and you need to fix it. That is why you continue in the situation you're in is because you hold on to it through fear. Perfect love cast out all fear. Trust him. Trust him with every situation. Trust him with your physical body. Trust him with every trial. Trust him with your finances. Believe that what he says is true. He said, come unto me all you that labor and are heavy laden. And I will give you rest. We are living in the rest. We are living in his promises. We are living in his glory. Right now in Jesus' name, I thank you, Father, that every person in this place releases to you and holds on no longer to these situations that would come against them like a flood. When a flood comes out, the Spirit of the Lord raises up the standard. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. You have redeemed us from every tongue. You have redeemed us from every tribe you have redeemed us from every nation you have redeemed us you washed us in your blood you have redeemed us you washed us from our sins you have redeemed and we praise your name, we praise you, Lord, 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 we praise you, we praise you, Lord, we praise you, Lord, we praise you, we praise you, Lord, we praise you, Lord, we praise you, Come worship the Father. Come on. Come worship the Son. Come worship the Lord. Come worship the Father. Come on, worship Him. Come on, worship Him. Come on, it's not about the words. Come worship. We worship your Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, we worship you. Father, we come to you. We worship you by Christ Jesus, your only begotten Son. Father, we come to you and we worship you right now. We worship you. We worship you. Now in Jesus' name, right now, by the power of the living God. Father, we worship you right now. We worship you, Lord. Father, we worship you. We come to you right now by Jesus Christ, your only begotten Son. Father, we worship you, Lord. We worship you. Worship him. Lift your voice and praise. Come magnify the ancient of days. God has made a way in. He's provided a way in. Come now into the throne of grace. Come on in. Come on in. Come worship the living God. Come worship Him. Everybody in the house, just start worshiping Him. Lord, we worship You. We worship You. Lord, we worship You. Lord, we worship You. Lord, we worship You. You. We worship you. Lord, we worship you. Father, we worship you. We worship you. Father, we worship you. We come to you by Jesus. We come and worship you through your only begotten Son. Oh, Father, we worship you. We worship you by this access which you've given through the Spirit. To the throne room, into the throne room of grace. Oh God, we worship you. Ah. Come worship the Lord. 
You know, I hear the Lord saying, you need to change your confession. The Lord wants you to hold fast a good confession of faith. He wants you to change your confession. Change your confession right now. Don't wait. Change it right now. God wants, God's talking to you. Listen, don't, don't re- ignore him when he's talking to you. Good baby. Don't ignore him when he's talking to you. Do not ignore him when he's talking to you. He said, many of you stay in the same state that you were in because you hold, apart, hold on to your fears. You stay in the same state. You never change because you, you continually are imprisoned by the same fear. If you don't change your confession, if you're not willing to let the power of God change you, you'll be doing that if God uh, allows you to live to be 80 years old. You'll still be doing it at 80. Nothing will change until you change in your heart. God has given us the power of change through the authority of His Word. His Word brought change. His Word was incarnated in the flesh and brought the greatest change that has ever been known to to humanity. The great change in salvation brought to us by the living Word, Christ Jesus. The Word of God. God right now describes everything about who Jesus is and what he did and how he did it. So therefore, if you hold fast to your confession of faith without wavering, I'm going to tell you, this is what you're going to have. It is going to create for you a salvation in whatever prison or situation, whether it's disease, whether it's finances, whether it's some kind of, of torment psychologically and emotionally. God says, I got a change for you. God says, God says, Paul said, Paul said, I beg you, I beseech you, be changed. I beseech you by the mercies of God, be reconciled, be changed. Be changed. Be changed. Be changed. The books cannot be reconciled in your life if you're not willing to hold forth a good confession, if you're not willing to declare what Christ Jesus has made you through what he did for us at Calvary. The books of your life cannot be reconciled with the life that God has for you. Many people live a life that cannot be reconciled with the description of God's promises. It cannot be reconciled with the description of God's salvation. It cannot be reconciled with the things that God, who is the faithful witness, has provided for us through this wonderful grace and mercy. Their lives cannot be reconciled with what God said and purposed. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? To know and believe the love that God has for you. 1 John 4, 13 and 14. To know and believe the love that God has for you. To both know it. And that is a relationship where we come to the cross of Christ. Each one of us come there and we see that Jesus died for us, not just for the whole world. He died for us. Somehow, this wonderful work of grace is going to have to become more personal to you if you want a personal relationship with God that will promote you into every one of God's promises, everything that He has said and spoken. He watches over to bring it to pass in your life. But if you've got a different confession, if you believe a different thing if you hold fast to a different state of living cannot be reconciled with what God said you have to ask yourself the way that I live can it be reconciled with the way that God has purposed for me to live those things which I say can it be reconciled with the faith that was brought to us by Christ Jesus you have to ask yourself these questions can my the description of what goes on in my mind be reconciled with the mind of Christ which has been given me? Can the life that I now live be reconciled with the new nature that Christ Jesus gave me? The way that I move, the way that I think, the way that I live. Can I lay hold upon the promises of God? Let me ask you this. What man, what person has ever earned or deserved or measured up to any of the good things which God has given to us? None. 
What does Father say? I've got a gift for you. Who does he say it to? He says it to the most, he says it to the most unworthy, most undeserving, a woman who, who, who was married five times and living in adultery with a man who wasn't her husband. And, and that day, that would have been the, probably the most wretched kind of a person to hang out with. You think about who's the most wretched kind of a person to hang out with today in our society. And now you're beginning to get comfortable having them sit right by you. And then maybe even watch Jesus pass you by and go right to them and say, I've got a gift for you. Why? Because they, they don't know. And they're hungry. They're desperate. They, are, they, they, so, they look so messed up on the outside because they're so desperate on the inside. People don't realize that. Huh? Papa's going to go to the hungry heart, the thirsty heart. God's calling you out of your prison. You've got to let go. You've got to change. You've got to change. My wife and I, we, we just been, we've been doing measurable changes in our life, just in the natural the, the natural re reflects the spiritual. The spiritual reflects the natural. And, and so we just, we just started saying, okay, well, these are the things we're going to do different. Here, we're going to start doing this different because we know that it's better. We know that it's, maybe it involves more, some more discipline. Maybe it involves some uncomfort. Maybe it involves some things that now we've got to put some more time into this to learn a new system, learn a new process, learn a new way. But it's better. And I'm not going to sit here back in the 1980 technology. Go ahead and move on up. Huh? Huh? My, my wife, she said she just did not want an iPhone at all, period. She's got her phone she's had since 1933. She got the first cell phone that they came out with in 19, whatever it was, you know, 1987 or whatever. I'm not changing. And then she heard a sermon preach, I preached the other night. She says, I'm changing. Get me an iPhone. I'm going to change everything. You know what? You know what? What's the most important thing is that Father sees that. You, 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 huh. If you start living your life for what Papa sees and what he thinks, I'm telling you right now, you, you, everything about your life is going to go to a whole new level. I don't care. It doesn't matter if you have all the wealth in the world. It doesn't matter if you've accomplished all the greatness that there is to accomplish. If you don't know him in a personal way to whether you love him and honor him so much and understand that he's always right there in front of you and that everything that we do either brings pleasure to him or displeasure, I'm telling you, your life changes. Yeah. Life changes. It doesn't matter how, about how many, how many trinkets you have. It doesn't matter about how many awards you have attached to your name. It doesn't matter how much wealth or, or riches or how, how little you may have. Or, or, or what you may have done. Maybe you've done nothing with your life. <laughs> when you have him, you have everything. everything. I need nothing else. Everything. I need nothing else. My boast is not in what I possess. My boast is not in what I possess. My boast is not in what I've done. <laughs> My boast is in who I've been privileged to know. Through the only begotten son. Today you've got to change your confession. Some of you, God has been striving with you for so long. Striving with you. Pleading with you. Striving. Literally reproving. That's what that word means. Uh, uh, Father said, my spirit should not always strive with men. For he, for he is but flesh, Genesis chapter 6. The number of his days should be yet 120 years. I believe he was talking about Adam because literally the scripture says, my spirit will not always strive with Adam for he is but flesh. And he was still alive by that time because Adam lived to be a very ancient guy. And the Lord saw, saw, the Lord saw that if you, can't get it in seven, if you can't get it in 70 years, you won't get it in 940 or 960 you just get worse, you become more hardened. You know what the best time to get change is? When you radical and willing to believe anything. That you, when you believe, when you can dream big and, and, and consider that you can do anything. I can do anything. Hallelujah. Then all of a sudden people get off. They, they have disappointments and discouragements and the issues happen in their life. And they begin to become more conservative and just trying to, you know, make it through another day. My goodness gracious, what a terrible life. Out of your prison now. Out, I command you to go out. You can be seated. Turn up a little sun. Um, I, I have this. First of all, welcome everybody. We're blessed that you're here. 
Some people are getting discouraged because we haven't moved in the new property. I say, let's let Almighty God have his will and way. I'm not discouraged. I'm bad. I don't, my, my, my concept of who I am, what God has me doing, has nothing to do with what property I have and what things I've done or haven't done or going to do. My whole purpose in God is who I have in him and who I am in him and who he is to me. You know, what I have in him. That's fellowship, relationship with him is all I desire. Now, come on. And that's going to get me out there. I'm, I'm so blessed with Adam. I'm so blessed with, with Kate and, 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 and so many other people going to the streets and preaching the gospel. It's the greatest, grandest adventure that you can possibly engage on. It doesn't matter how many people are walking by or how many people respond. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The apostle of Nepal, the guy who turned, the, the one who they say is as great uh, was as great as the Himalayas in itself. Yeah. Was the youngest major in the British Army in India at 27. He was a Nepali at 27 years of age. He was a major, great success. He walked by a little marketplace in India and heard a couple of people standing there uh, singing a few songs and preached a simple sermon. Is your name written in the book of life? See, in, in Hinduism, if you sin, you have to spend 54,000 life cycles as an insect. At best, you get to be some animal. Depending on the severity of your sin. Hinduism, the greatest guru in, in all of Hinduism, does not have an answer to how you can get cleansed from one sin. One sin, 54,000 life cycles. This is orthodox Hinduism. You're not going to hear it in America. Somebody starts preaching that in America, and then everybody's going to abandon the ship. Right now, they just like to do the yoga and whatever else. Imbibe those demon spirits. Huh? It was a, a meditative state to try to walk into a realm of holiness. Because every Hindu knows, every Orthodox Hindu knows, you don't step into the presence of God if there's any unholiness, any unrighteousness in your life. Here's an Orthodox Hindu major in the most elite unit, most e elite unit in the Nepali army that they bring from the nation of, Nepali, of Nepal because they're the radical, radical soldiers, warriors. And um, he hears a little group of people preaching just like Adam and, 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 and some of the others who were preaching on the, on the YouTube, the video that they released yesterday. And, and he, he said, he heard them say that there was a means to have his sins forgiven. He was interested because he had asked every guru that he knew, every, every person that he knew that was one of the teachers in Hinduism. What can I do about my sins? And no one would ever answer him. The blood of Jesus Christ cleansed me from all my sins. You mean he'll wash me free and cleanse me? He'll make me a new creation? And then when he was convinced, convinced of it, he did the most simplest thing that can be imagined. God has made the most, God, listen, God has made a way of salvation that goes beyond, defies the imagination. It's so simple. Just, just say, just say this. Say, Jesus Christ, you are my Savior. Boom. Yep. Miracle. <laughs> Miracle. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Miracle. No, we want to go through some long, lengthy process. Miracle. Jesus Christ, I believe on you. That you are my Savior. I believe that when you went to the cross of Calvary and died for my sins, that you then rose up from the grave. And that I've been raised up together with you. I commit myself to live for you, to walk with you, to obey you. I thank you that you've washed all my sins away in your precious blood. And that by the power of the Holy Ghost, I've been made a new creation. So simple. God works a miracle of change. And then what happens? Is people quit following on to know the Lord. As simple as the instruction came from the word of God to work the greatest miracle. There's a thousand more descriptions of miraculous things that God would do if you would obey his promise. And people get stuck in the prison. You know why? Listen to me. I'm going to tell you why. Cares of this life. You need to mark the cares of this life and say, cares of this life, you are my enemy. You are keeping me from the best thing, the greatest reward. And I'm not going to associate with you anymore. I'm not having you in my life. Cares of this life, 
You will no longer rule my opinion. You will no longer rule my thoughts. You'll no longer be the motivator for how I act and what I do. Hallelujah. People, God wants you to prepare for eternity. God's made a way for you to be able to escape an eternity in absence of God. It's far worse than 54 life cycles. It's far worse than 54 life cycle, 54,000 life cycles as an insect or an animal, even though they may only live, you know, a year. Still, if the insect lives a year, it's 54,000 years crawling around as a bug, <laughs> dodging birds and being the lowest, you know, practically the lowest thing on the food chain. Pray to everything. It's far worse than that. Let me tell you why it's far worse. Forever, for age without end, for an eternity, you'll be in the company of the one who hates God. And he, don't only hate God, he doesn't only hate God, he's consumed with his own hate and his lust to hate. He's consumed with his discouragement. He's consumed with his deception. He's consumed with his disappointment. He's consumed with his aggravation. He's, co he's consumed with his... With everything that is evil. He hates everything. Especially you. This is truth. God loves us so much. Father loves us so much. You have to decide today. Whether or not you're going to begin. To grab a hold of the word of God. And live by the word of God. My, when you take a hold of this so great a salvation, you're going to get into a grand adventure. You're going to go everywhere. First of all, knowing him, knowing him is going to cause you, motivate you to go out, lift up your voice in the street. Because I'm telling you right now, if you just lock yourself into some small little population, you know, of people, of friends and family, that's a good place to begin. But my goodness, that's not what the harvest field is. Out there, there's three million people running around out here in this city who's never heard Jesus. Imagine if every one of God's people would find themselves a street corner, lift up their voice. This whole city would be filled with the voice of heaven. Somebody said, well, I'm waiting for that to happen, then I'll join in. No, why don't you go ahead and get the program started? I'm so blessed that Adam and Samantha is getting the program started. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Look, I'm telling you, there's, you, there, you'll find no greater joy. Hallelujah. I mean, I watched Adam go from, in just a very short time, being bound by the powers of darkness and deception and discouragement, completely, totally free. Amen. Completely, totally free. Completely, totally free. In just a very short time. Why? Oh, because he's some, you know, God's got some special purpose for him? No. No. Because he was willing to be obedient. He's willing to simply be obedient. And that's the problem. There's no problem with you working through the issues, processing, asking questions. At the end of the day, will you obey the gospel? Because I'm going to tell you right now, you're going to be one miserable person being disobedient to God. Ask Jonah. Ask Jonah. You'll be one miserable person being disobedient to God. Well, how am I being disobedient? Because I'm putting my life first. I'm putting the things of this earth first. I'm continuing to go on in the same way that I've lived all my life. I'm continuing to believe the same things, say the same things, act the same way. When all this time, God the Holy Ghost has come to deliver us from the cursed way of humanity. Come to deliver, deliver us from animal instincts that have taken hold of men. To show us how to walk in the beauty of His holiness and the purity of His righteousness. To walk in all the splendor of His humility and the splendor of His meekness. And all these wonderful things that belong to love. Where everybody you see, you love them like Jesus loves them. If you come to the cross of Christ yourself personally, you come to the cross of Christ and you don't see Jesus just dying for the whole world. You see him dying for you. He bore your sins away. He bore your sins away at Calvary. So that you might know the Father. John chapter 17, verse 3. Open your Bibles there. I want you to just look at that. He bore your sins away so that you might know the Father. Tonight I'm on minister and we're going to see some miracles take place in this place. I mean, I'm breaking through into another realm in San Diego, California. It's like we go, we go in foreign countries and it's like, you know, it's like cutting, you know, it's like putting a hot knife through butter, man. It's just easy. Come here. It's just, we, we just, we just got to continue to press this thing and continue to press this thing. So I'm going to tell you right now, as soon as somebody breaks through into the realms of these works... Uh, m much more <laughs> greater works. I'm telling you right now, the lost, the unreached, not not church growth, tran church growth by transfer of, of, of people who are aggravated and disgruntled about the church they were going to, looking for you know better pastures. 
I'm talking about the radically lost giving their life to Jesus, having an encounter with the living God, are going to begin to flood into the place. They're going to begin to flood in. And I'm pressing into it. Somebody said, what are you doing? I'm pressing in. I'm standing here. I'm screaming at this mountain. You get out of the way. Satan, you have had your claws on Southern California, especially San Diego, for way too long. Jesus Christ, he has all authority in heaven and in San Diego. And he's told me to go. And I'm going to stand here and you vile spirit of hell that wants to stop me, that wants to run interference for me through men, through men, through people, as well as demons. I knew one great man of God said, my goodness, I don't need any devils to fight me. I got enough people around me. I don't need Satan to come run interference. It's God's people running interference. And that's got to stop. And that stops when you come to the cross and you see that Jesus Christ died personally for you, that he bore your sins on the tree at Calvary. He didn't do it for anybody else. He did it for you and bring it down to that level. Of course he did it for everyone. But it's got to come down to a level that's so personal that he did it just for you. Just for you. Came personally. I'm just telling you out of my own relationship. That event became personal for me. And I'm telling you right now, when it finally, that hit me, every tear in my body came out. Every tear that, that I possessed came out of my being. Because it, it, it became, And it became deeper to me and more richer to me than anything else in this life. And when I, when I met Jesus... Something happened on the inside. I needed to go and find out everybody else who wanted to meet him too. It may be one in a hundred. It may even be one in a thousand. But I'm going to go find out everybody who wants to know him too. (laughs) You know, I was on a highway that connects the ancient uh, civilization of West Bengal to Kashmir. It runs from the east of Nepal to the west of Nepal. And as we're driving, as we're driving along, I'm seeing about every 50 to 100 kilometers, I'm seeing another soccer field, another soccer field, another soccer field, another soccer field. Then I'm seeing in my mind's eye, huh? I've seen a caravan, huh? I'm seeing, I'm seeing a, a forerunner with a big trailer packed with everything you need to get out there and get things set up, praise God, huh? Thousands upon tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of people coming into the kingdom of God. We, every time we, we, we do crusade, we see thousands. I, I, say, I say, how many of you Hindus want to accept Jesus Christ as the only true and living God today? How many of you want to be washed from your sin and have your names written in the Lamb's Book of Life? Every hand will go up. Every hand. doesn't matter if it's 2,000 or 5,000 in the smaller meetings. Every hand will go up and everyone will come forward. Everyone. And I believe, God, the same thing will happen here in Southern California. But God's people are going to have to get out the ditch. God's people are going to have to wake up and no longer be ignorant concerning Satan's devices. They're constantly holding you in a realm of earthly thinking and earthly cares. Oh, when you get the wisdom and insight to have your affection seated upon things above Satan is shut down, he can't deceive you no more. He can only begin to grab a hold of your heart and affections and work on you through earthly cares. Earthly cares. Deceitfulness of riches. Somebody said, well, oh, praise God. I'm so glad that I don't have the deceitfulness of riches. I'm not running after money. Give me a break. You got your mortgage. You got your car. You got your other little, you know, things that you're just, you know, you fancy. Give me a break. That's riches. Huh? Come on now. When your heart's wrapped up around it, you got to have your house. You got to have your car. You got to have your clothes. You got to have your food. Give me a break. The Lord takes care of all that stuff if you seek Him. He gives you more than you could ever possibly get for yourself. Somebody said, if I don't get it for myself, who's going to take care of me? God. (laughs) Just like He took care of your sins when He died for you at Calvary's cross. Just like He took care of the power and the authority of death over your life when He rose up from the dead. Just like, just like he has now prepared a place for you when he went and sent it up into heaven and sat down at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. Expecting till his enemies made his footstool. Dear people, man was separated from knowing God because of the deception of sin, the deception of Satan. And it became, it came into man's life through a very uh, 
subtle and unobvious way. There was no big act of adultery. There was no big murder. Huh? There was no big robbery. It was all about relationship that day. When Satan came and began to bring into Eve's mind a question concerning God's true love, concerning God's real motive for their life, I wouldn't doubt that it went similar. In, I wouldn't doubt that knowing that Satan probably uses the same tricks, I wouldn't doubt that when he, when he turned the mighty angels who had stood before the presence of God, the mighty cherubims, who stood before the presence of God throughout the ages. See, God lives in another realm. We live in a temporal realm. He lives in an eternal realm. He lives in a realm that is ageless. And those angels that were around him, beholding his glory, beholding his beauty, beholding his splendor, I wouldn't, I wouldn't doubt that Satan went around with the same trick, bringing into question God's true motive and concern for their lives. And you know, the scripture says he overthrew one-third of the angels that had beheld the presence of God who stood as the mighty host of God. Give me a break, people. If Satan has that kind of power, has that kind of authority to work his craft of deception, how, how long will you be ignorant concerning his devices? Don't you understand that the wiles and the tricks of Satan are far bigger than for you, for, for you and me to be able to deal with after our own human understanding? Don't you understand that you've got to have the Word of God, that the Word of God is a light that shows the truth. It's the, it's, a, it's the light that shows us the path of life to walk in. It's the only means by which we can escape. It's the only means by which we can deal with the powers of darkness that come out against us. It's the only place of safety that we can dwell in. It's just simply obeying the Word of God, doing the Word of God, not just being the hear the Word of God, being here, the Word of God, not going to protect you from nothing. You have to obey the Word of God, the simplicity of the Word of God. You have to walk in love and be clothed with humility, otherwise you're not going to get it. Huh? You have to set your affections on things above, not on things of this earth, or not, otherwise you're not going to get it. You have to get out of pretend. You're going to have to look, go to, go to the person who doesn't really like you and ask them if they view you as a person with their affections set upon things above. They'll tell you no or yes. Yeah, I don't like you, but you know what? I can see that Christ Jesus first in your life and that you live for him. Yeah, that I can, I can see that all your affections and things about. Or they might just tell you, no, you know what? You're just as honor as anybody else I've ever known. Huh? Huh? I remember one day I was out serving with some friends, and one friend walked up, one friend pedaled up to another person and started telling them about Jesus. And he said, look, man, I saw you scratching for the wave and knocking everybody out of your way. What are you talking about? <laughs> I saw you scratching for the way. I saw, your, I saw what was going on in your life. And talk to me about Jesus. Get out of here. Leave me alone. Huh? There's a lot of people watching you, man. You know what? Folks, folks are desperate on the inside for God. If you are so desperate for God, they'll bow down to a little fat Buddha idol. That's desperate. You can't talk about desperate. Are you listening to me? Huh? They'll, 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 they'll take a chain of beads and, and say a bunch of nonsense words over and over again. It's undesperate people. What happens if you and I begin to show them Jesus? You and I cannot show them Jesus until you and I will begin to know Jesus. Hallelujah. Do you know that Jesus was able to say, anyone who's seen me has seen the Father. Why? Because he did not have an independent life, an independent will. He did not. He said that he did nothing of his own, but he did rather the works of the Father. I'm going to minister on that tonight, John 5, 19, 20. Just a little advertisement. <laughs> and doing only the works of the Father, Father was revealed in him. So that you and I now are supposed to have the same kind of relationship. <laughs> Hallelujah. We, we don't do our own deeds. We do the deeds of Christ Jesus so that Jesus might be revealed. And we can say with, with Paul, I don't live, Christ lives. We can say with Paul. He's manifested in my mortal flesh. Hallelujah. Come on, man. This is the work of the grace. This is the work of God, the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. 
I want to see God's people get fired up, man. I want you to get fired up. I want you to get fired up in truth. I don't want you to get fired up out of works. I don't want you to get fired up out of legalism. I don't want you to get fired up out of some kind of motivation for, for success in the kingdom of God. I want you to get fired up because you see Jesus at the cross of Calvary laid his life down for your sin. Because an opportunity has been made available to you to step in and know the living God. And it is the most wonderful and amazing thing to you. And as that happens, that same love that was in his heart suddenly fills your heart. And you have the same response to humanity as he had. Yes. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. That anyone who believes should have everlasting life. Should step in to this eternal realm with Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And not come into everlasting condemnation. For the Lord, shall ju- God has appointed one man. To judge the world in righteousness. And every person will stand before him. And every person will give an account for the deeds of their life. And we can see as Jesus gave it the description of it. Having sheep on his right hand and having goats on his left hand. And to the sheep he said, enter in, enter in now to the rest. Enter into the joy Enter into this glorious life forever and more. And to the goats, he said, depart into everlasting destruction. This is the kind of messages Jesus preached. He said, he said, listen, he said, if your right hand offends you, he's talking to the covenant people that need to learn how to live free from sin, that need to learn how to live in the glory of heaven. He said, if your right hand offends you, cut it off. It's better for you to enter into life having one hand than to be cast into eternity, into a lake of fire, having two. Those are the radical messages Jesus preached. Come on now. Jesus died at Calvary's cross to make a way back in to relationship with the Father. Not to give us an excuse to go on sinning. Not to live under a demonic influence. Not to be continuing to choose out of a, out of a, out of a heart dominated with a condition of the, of the disease of sin. To continue to choose that which is a reproach and an act of violence against the name of the living God. I just want to read a couple of verses of scripture to you. Time gets away from me so quick. I've still, still been wanting my dear wife come up, minister to you since we've been back. And it just seems like time gets away here. She you know, was blessing every, just about everywhere we went, she preached. And every time she preached, I mean, the, the glory of God touched people's lives. And we want that for every one of you. Listen. We're here ministering to you so that you will take these things and you will profit from them. We're here ministering to you today if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ. And unfortunately, I don't see anyone in here who hasn't called upon the name of Jesus Christ at some point. That's a sad thing because we need to go get the lost and bring them in. And if 2 o'clock in the afternoon is better for you, I will change the meeting to 2 o'clock. Whatever works better for you to go out. Go to the highways and the byways. Said, I did. I went, to, I went to 80 people. Well, if you'd have gone to 100, you'd have found one. You can't get down on your knees and begin to cry out to God and live your day, every day for God and not get some kind of fruit out of it. Now, hallelujah. I'm listening to you. I, I would like to be able to talk to the lost here today, but you're going to have to find some way to bring them in. God will give you a revelation if you'll seek him. He'll give you a word of knowledge. He'll give you insight in heaven because his heart is, is absolutely focused on the lost I'm here, if you're lost, I'm here for your profit today. If you're diseased, I'm here for your profit today. If you know God and then walk with God, I'm here for your profit today. That you would hear the word of God this day you would change. And you would no longer have the same problems, the same fears. Listen, the Lord's Lord's speaking to you. The Lord's speaking to you. Don't you realize that? You know, when, when Geneva got up, Pastor Geneva got up and began to minister. Come on now. And began to say, by the spirit of the Lord. It's your fears that have kept you in your prison. It's your fears. It's the things that you hold on to that you will not let let go of, of earthly concerns that are keeping you from moving forward. It's God saying to you, not condemning you, but giving you his word of instruction so that you might be set free. You don't have any reason to sulk. Cain sulked. You better watch out. Sulking might be a, a witness that you appointed unto destruction. And I don't say that lightly. I'm just saying you're going to have to get, something's going to have to kick in. Something's going to have to kick in. Desperation's going to have to kick in. Wanting to be right with God has to kick in. Are you listening to me? 
<laughs> I'll rock your boat of doctrine every time I stand up here if I possibly can. Amen. Whatever it takes to bring change into your life. Cain salt. God said, I got deliverance for you. There's a sacrifice lies at your door offered. He's salt. He just felt condemned. You know why? Uh, Abel. Look, Abel. Why is it that he gets the why does it he he gets the, the praise? Why is it that he gets the, the good favor of God? Here I am. Look at I did, did my best. I did my best. <laughs> Sulking. Now he didn't he might have done his best, but he didn't do what was right. Are you listening to me? He might have done his best, but he didn't do what was right. And then what did that take him? Disobedience at that level? Huh? Disobedience at the altar takes him to a place of the ultimate transgression of murder. And then the ultimate place of being cut off of God. Esau salt. Esau salt. There was plenty of space of time for him to hear and obey God and listen to God and, and honor the things of the Spirit. And instead, he went his own way to the point that we read. He looked and sought for some forgiveness. He sought for redemption. He sought for a place for him to be able to step into the inheritance too. And the scripture says, and there was no repentance or place of repentance found for him. I'm not going to run no risk like that. And by the help and the grace of God, I'm going to preach as hard and as desperate and as fiery and as full of the Holy Ghost as I possibly can. Listen, dear people, until change comes into your life. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. God, I'm so blessed to have my baby here, my grandbaby. Hallelujah. What a blessing, huh? What a blessing, the life and, the, and the, the blessings that God has given to us. The blessing the Lord has given. The amazing wife that, my, that, that the Lord gave to my oldest son. The amazing woman that the Lord yes, gave to my second oldest son. And we're still praying over the daughters. <laughs> because the life is just so blessed when we obey God. It's so rich. There's so much reward. I'm telling you, man, I'm looking forward to the future. I'm not sitting here despondent. I've never been despondent. I've taken, I found out that in every trial, in every fiery situation, I can praise him, and I did. Yes. Hallelujah. And I found out that in every situation where the, the circumstances opposed me, that ultimately God came with a blessing and rewarded it in me. Hallelujah. Huh? I mean, there might have been times where you felt like you escaped Potiphar's wife to end up in the prison. Huh? Huh? Seems like everybody who didn't escape Potiphar's wife ended up in getting promoted, but by men. Escape Potiphar's wife to get, get thrown into the prison, but oh, promotion was waiting for you. Yeah. Promotion was waiting for you. And then here, here, maybe you did, maybe you blew it, maybe you absolutely, maybe Satan came along and tricked you and snared you, but here's the beautiful thing. God, in his mercies, has provided a way to where that if we're willing, if our heart truly means it, his blood will wash us, cleanse us, so that the new creation remains intact. And we are as those who are as the holy angels who never sinned, even to a point that we judge them. Figure that out. I found out there's nothing in the Bible you can figure out. <laughs> And anybody who says they have, just smile and bless them. Because I'll tell you right now, just higher than. Higher. Father wants his glory to be revealed in our midst. And nations will run to us if his glory is revealed in our midst. But he says, you're going to have to understand, you've got to seek the Lord. It's time to seek him. You've got to seek him while he may be found. You've got to forsake your thoughts. You've got to forsake your earthly thinking, your earthly way of living you need to, today, you need to go ahead and do what Jesus said to the rich man. You need to sell everything that you have and give it to the poor. Give it to the poor. Give it to the orphans and give it to the widows. We have a ministry going on. Of one of the largest networks of orphanages in the nation of Nepal. And it is the best, highest standards of orphanages that exist. Why? Because the person whose mom and dad over the orphanage are full of the Holy Ghost and they're filling up the kids every day with the things of the Spirit and giving them a good education and 100% of the finances that come through our hands, there is no overhead. Hallelujah. Every penny of it goes to the orphanages. 
Amen. So go sell everything that you have and start over with God. Amen. Say, Lord, if you give me a job, fine. My job will be only about you. It won't be about me. It'll be about lifting the banner of the kingdom of God, lifting high the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Why, why is it that God's having to go and find the people that don't know him to do his work? Huh? I, I recently heard about a woman, who, a spinal a physician, a spinal doctor. She died. She was dead for 15 minutes. She went in to the realms of heaven, stepped right out of her body. She said she peeled away from her body, and there was standing all around her spirits or angels. She literally said angels. And she said, I was home. She said, I love my, my children, but the love that I felt right there did not even compare to the love I had for my children. And, and the Lord Jesus came to her, and she said, the Lord Jesus came to me and said I had to go back. And I said, why? I don't want to. I'm home. And people are trying to get that out of them, trying to figure that out. They can't figure that out. I know about it because I live in that realm. I'm constantly get, stepping in to a deeper expression of that love and of that joy. I'm home. I'm, I'm, I'm in that love right now of, of the eternal realm. And I, I know, I know that if God's people will begin to live in this place that has been get, provided for us through the door of Christ Jesus, that you'll go out into the highways and the byways and people will begin to experience what that dear woman experienced. And she had to die to experience it. They don't have to die. They just have to encounter somebody like you and me. To begin to experience love. And what happens if we begin to come together and, and seek God like that as a company of people in some sac in this sacred realm that he set up called the church where his glory is manifested on a higher level. Listen to me. God set up a temple in the Old Testament. He set up a temple in the Old Testament, a place where his glory could be manifested. Now in the New Testament, he set up the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, a place where his glory might be made manifest. It is not something that belongs to men. It can't be ruled by the traditions of men if it is it's ruined it's ruined it's profaned it's profaned as much as if you took a, a, a pig and cut off its head and sacrificed upon the altar of the temple that god erected in israel or the tabernacle of the tent that he put up in the wilderness belongs to him people bring their ideas and their opinions oh but if you come and worship him the same anointing that i watched come on 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 joshua this morning and then I watched the anointing come on David over there. Then I watched the anointing go on, on the Geneva over there. And, and there, the, the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every person an anointing uh, where, where, where you literally peeled out that whatever it is you're in and step over into a realm with Him. But what happens now if you begin to delight in that realm? You say, I'm living in this realm. Woo! I'm going to tell you right now. Your face lights up with this goodness of God. His word becomes like a fire shut up in your bones. Your heart's overwhelmed with the compassion and the love of God for humanity. You can't sit at home. Reality is not something, or eternity is, uh, the reality of eternity is not something of the future. It's something right before you. You see them right before you and on your right hand. There you're already giving an account. It's not later, it's now. Somebody said, I've got a problem. You have no problem but the ones you create. And you allow Satan to create for you. Otherwise, Jesus Christ is a liar and he doesn't exist. It's time you rise up and say, wait a minute. I'm not going to be a false witness. Does God hate false witnesses? I'm telling you right now, there's nothing worse than a false witness. Well, what about a false witness for Jesus? I'm not going to be a false witness. If there's any plea of my heart and cry of my heart as I lift up my voice in prayer to God, as I cry out, oh God, have mercy upon me, lest I run the risk of being a false witness of who you are to a lost and dying world that is in need of seeing you and knowing you like never before. Rise up, O oh house of God. Put on thy divine glory now. Let those things which Christ Jesus spoke be the very definition of your life. No longer seek your own interest. No longer spend your life for that which cannot profit. For you rise up early in the morning and you go to work and you work desperately and you spend all your time and energy on that which cannot profit you nor change the life of one around you. How long will you halt between two opinions? How long will you be salved by just another religious experience when all the time you're unwilling to let go of your life and fully follow him? Rise up, house of God. You can take everything that you are and you can put it into the offering basket and then let God raise up out of you something glorious. Oh yeah, Paul made tents, but it was tents. Oh, prophet, only to go and be able to preach the gospel yet to another city, yet to another town. 
The Macedonians were so taken by the power and the authority of the love and grace of Christ Jesus Christ that the scripture says they gave themselves, they handed themselves over for the purpose of supporting the ministry. John said the same thing in First John chapter, uh, third, third epistle of John concerning the company of people that he was around. But what happens is you begin to live your life for yourself. You get more and more stingy every day. And you're preparing to take care of yourself in the future. But your future timeline is very narrow-minded. It's very short. It's not reality. Because I'm going to tell you right now, your future belongs into a realm called eternity. Are you preparing for eternity? Oh, prepare thyself to meet your God. Prepare to meet your God. Are you preparing? Are you preparing for the reality of what's really going to happen? So many preparing, well, but you have something to hang on to, have the security of a home. Your home could be gone, could, could be gone in this, in this crisis today. And even if the nation was secure, could be gone in an instant tomorrow. Then what do you have? Then you have to trust God. Well, he'll still love you then. He'll still take you then. I said, yeah, I know if you had a house right now, you'd take it above me. But I love you and I'm glad that you're taking me now. That's God. That's God. This is Him. He take what He can give to you. Amazing God. You're not getting that from me. You're not getting Plan B from me. He's not getting the alternative from me. I'm gonna give Him. I'm gonna. I'm gonna. I'm gonna right now, let's look at this whole world. I'm gonna look at everything that exists and I say, Lord, I, all I want is You. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. 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 All I want is You. Would you say that today? Would you let God? Have his way with you. Would, would you not allow things to dominate you anymore? Fears to hold you back anymore? Did, did, well, can you just with total abandonment trust God and say, Lord, okay, if I live or if I die, it's for you. If I die, praise God. See, see you know what happened to Paul is he, got a, he, 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 he went there. He saw that realm and he didn't want to come back. And so he said, I groan. I groan to put off this earthly tabernacle. See, he saw the realm. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. I groan to be divested of this earthly realm. Woo! Don't you want to see that place? It's there at the cross of Christ that it can be observed. I groan to be in, have all this over, to be absent from the body so that I might be present with the Lord. For I know that this earthly tabernacle will be dissolved. Hallelujah. I have a heavenly one. Oh, i Ah, people live before the interest of the resurrection. Understand that Jesus rose up from the dead, proof that he had power over all the works of darkness, that sin and its problem was forever solved. Death had no more power to reign over those who would come and follow his leadership. In that, in that resurrection, that proof of life, of who he is and the acceptable offering that he was on the Father. You and I have been raised up together with him in the same likeness of the newness of life. Though yet our body is still corruptible and going to a grave. I don't set my eyes on it. I set my eyes upon a heavenly tabernacle. I set my eyes upon an inward work, an unseen work. Hallelujah. I tell you, death will not take me by surprise. I won't be concerned one moment breathing out this inward man to go to heaven. I already understand and 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 grow again and (laughs) the things of that transition. I invite you to come today. I invite you that are watching via YouTube or or the web right now. Come go with me to my father's house. Jesus said, in my father's house are many mansions. In my father's house, in other words, he said, literally, are many dwelling places. Hallelujah. I go to prepare a place for you. He's talking to all humanity. I go to prepare a place for you. That where I am, there you may be also. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What a promise. If I go away, I will come and, I will come and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there you may be with me. As well. Jesus can't come and get me. Somebody said, well, when the Bible says that the angels came and carried Lazarus away. Lazarus was before the resurrection of Jesus. Jesus come and get me. He come and get me. He's gonna come and get those of you. I'm preparing for that. That's 
That's my retirement plan. That's my future security plan. Oh God, I pray in Jesus' name. The reality will strike the souls and the hearts of those that are seated in this place for surely, Lord. Those, though they be few in number, would be mighty in you. You could change the world from this a small company. Yes. 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 I want you to put first the kingdom of God. Believe with us now. For no more delays in going into the harvest. We know that, you know, it's holiday time. People doing this thing, going here and going there. But look, we want no more delays. We want to step into the harvest field like never before. I mean, the Lord gave me, I just gave me this wonderful plan for next year. I want to begin to work on it starting. Uh, oh, actually, I've already begun to work on it. it is, it's, a, it's a Christmas program done by adults and children and it focuses on all the prophecies concerning Jesus and most of them are going to be songs sung and I'm, and I'm believing God that the, I'm, I'm not looking for the I'm looking for the most I'm going to look for the most anointed pe preachers that I know people who you know where how the anointing gets developed in your life because you're willing to go do it you want to go out in the highways and the byways and preach yeah, it begins, God begins to fashion you and prepare you in the prayer room. He begins to fashion you and prepare you in the church setting. But it doesn't begin to really grow. It doesn't really begin to flourish until you're willing to obey God and go do the things which he said to do. Go lay hands on the sick and cast out devils. Hallelujah. Today we invite you, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm telling you, today you do not have to have, from this day forward, any more demonic influence that ultimately takes hold of you and works its work through you. There will be demonic influence on the level that you'll be tempted. But there is an authority, a strength of the Lord, and the power of His might that you can stand in, and your whole life will be changed. Today, breathe the fresh air of heaven. Today, breathe, come out of that that noxious atmosphere of earthly thinking. Come out of that toxic realm of demonic influence. Step over here and breathe the fresh air of heaven. Hallelujah. Today, God's made a way so that your name can be written in the Lamb's book of life. Your name can be written and inscribed in the book of life. Today. Today, God has made a way that in the same event, you should be born of the Spirit. Today. And that you should be baptized in the Holy Ghost and step over into a realm of heaven and your face will light up with his presence and you'll be taught the ways of God. And in no time, in no time, in just a very few months, great changes would be in your life. In a few years, even greater changes as God prepares you to walk in all the splendor and the glory and the beauty of his ways. You don't have to walk in the rags of human affairs and the influence of the prince and the power of the air. Ha. Huh. Hallelujah. Come now. Come now. God invites you. Come dwell in him. Come live in him. What's important to you today? For many people, just like the rich man, their riches, their security, their jobs, their influence, their own ambitions, the way that other people view them, whether they're a failure or whether they're a success, I care not for neither. All I want is his approval. Let me be a failure does not matter to me so long as I have his approval. Let me be a raging success. I care not for it. All I want is his approval. Huh? If a failure is a big deal to you and still in your relationship with the Lord, success will even ruin you far worse. Get over all that stuff. Set your affections upon things of above, not on things of this earth. Quit making all these other things important to you. That's Satan's trick. As soon as the enemy starts lying to you and saying this one, that one, this thing, that thing, turn your eyes towards heaven and say, Jesus, you all that I desire, that I might know you, oh God, that I might fully live for you, God. Thank you for all that you've done for me, the amazing grace. You found me polluted in my own blood, dead in my trespasses and sin. You came, washed me, cleansed me, put upon me this royal garments of this heavenly realm. You gave me beauty for ashes. 
gave me the oil of joy for mourning, garment of praise for spirit of heaviness. I am the tree of righteousness. I am the planting of the Lord, and my Father Himself is glorified. Si o tu yala masata, pi tu dono na masata. Just want to read this verse of scripture, and then we're gonna. Watch out for the watch out for the things and the influences around you. Don't let them take your heart. Just keep your face and your heart and your affections fixed on Jesus. And you'll influence people around you. And you'll take them where you're going rather than the other way around. Huh? Hallelujah. If, if, if the debt collectors come and they bring all an army with them to take you and put you into prison and take your life. Don't worry, Chris. Don't fret yourself because of evildoers. Fret not yourself. Huh? Don't fret yourself over the things of your own mistakes and, and, and doings. <laughs> For God, he cares for you. Hallelujah. Woo-hoo. Woo-hoo. Jesus is here. The Lord Jesus is here. The Lord Jesus Christ is here. He's the maker of the heavens. He's the maker of the earth. He's the maker of everything. Hallelujah. Begin to sing that in, uh, in Nepal. Nobody joining in in the song. They were captivated and raptured by the glory. Because there's no resistance to it. It's not just a religious thing. It's not a thing about our own service and doing it. Oh, it becomes a reality of an experience with the living God. You're going to have yourself an experience with God. One second after you did, you're going to have yourself an experience with God. I know one preacher who said that he died and he went into a, a tunnel, a very limited area, a tunnel of light, as it were, and went into then an examination room. Everybody I've ever heard say that. It's not a good thing. The next step, is, the next stop is hell. And there, in this, in this place, he was in his dead for three days, four days, something like that. They were telling him, look, you're not right with God. You're not right. Jesus never came into the room. You're not right with God. You're condemned to an eternity without God. He said, no, you got the wrong file. No, this is the right book. Scripture talks about all of our deeds being written in his book. All of our life. Can you reconcile your life with the life that God described that you should have once being redeemed? Can you reconcile your life with the life that God has purposed for you and I to have when he created Adam in the garden and brought us up from the dead by the resurrection of Jesus Christ, spiritual death? Hold this. I want my baby in here because she just needs some prayer. She's the Holy Ghost. Amen. She's up there at UC Santa Cruz. Bunch of deadheads. Bunch of educated idiots. And it's true. It's, and I'm not saying that disrespectfully. I'm just saying as a matter of fact. Denied God and the ways of God. Rather grab a hold of a tree and hold on, hold on to that and feel some energy from the roots. Something. My God in heaven, what deception. That's desperate. So desperate for God, huh? Man, you just how smart you are. Man gave you a PhD, and the only way you can touch heaven is grab a hold of a tree, hug on to the thing, and somehow out of its roots and out of its leaves, you're going to be able to receive some, something, whatever. I want to see that yoke broken up there. I want to see that yoke broken right here. Oh, right by Jesus. If you turn your life over to Jesus, if you turn your life over to Jesus, you'll never have another sad day. I'm going to say it again. If you turn your life over to Jesus, you'll never have another sad day. Somebody said, well, I turned my life over to Jesus, and I've had many sad days. Those are the ones you claimed. You took it back. You took it back. You turned your life over to Jesus, but you took it back. You took it into your own control. You believed what you wanted to believe about yourself. And Anna and I are here to tell you about it. You love Papa. Huh? Yeah, I know you do. Now I want you to go sit over here with Mom. You're learning how to sit still in church. Dad, Papa's just about done. I got to just read one verse of scripture. She, 
she watches too much on the web. Because <laughs> God, there, uh, Allie and Joshua are working in a local church up there. And um, it's called Vintage Fellowship. Faith. Huh? Vintage Faith. Vintage Faith. Mm -hmm. And they don't know a lot about the things of the Spirit. The two Holy Ghost people just stepped into their lives. Amen. And Allie's already leading the Bible study, Bible, women's Bible study up there. Praise God for that. Amen. Joshua's already involved in worship up there. Praise God for that. Not walk around seeing what's bad, saying, look, I'm here to bring the good. Huh? See, a lot of you, oh, this is bad, that's bad. Uh, you know, where's the good? Where's the good? I thought you were the bearer of the good news. I thought you were the brinker of the authority of heaven, the changing power of the living God. I mean, Tom, you... It's time you start serving instead of wanting to be served all the time. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. Praise God forevermore. <clears throat> Let me read this verse of scripture to you. You know, I, there is a, some dear friends of ours that right now are watching on the web. And what they do is while I'm preaching, they look up all of the corollary verses of scripture, <laughs> put it in graphic form, list it out, itemize it, and they tweet it to a site that you can go to and see all the verses of Scripture because they recognize I don't have time to take the people all, to read all the verses of Scripture that I quote. And so you want to get on that list. If you would just like to have all the verses of Scripture that, I, that I've spoken this morning and the corollary verses of Scripture that go along with it, then praise God, you can do that. Amen. Amen. And it, uh, Praise God. Thank you for doing that. Praise God for people who just get a vision to see the gospel go forward. Listen, people, we're blessed with all of you. Why don't you understand? We thank you that you stand with us in the ministry of the gospel. I'm just telling you, God's got promotion for you. I don't like, I mean, I'm not going to be happy sitting around watching you plagued with some kind of a disease. Anybody going to be happy if one of their children get leukemia? You're going to be happy that I just like to sit around and watch your kids. You go, well, he's got leukemia. Just leave him alone. I mean, are you going to do that? Oh, they got terminal cancer, and you know that they, they, they just just their choices that they made. <laughs> you're gonna do that. You're gonna find. You're gonna go search out every remedy, and then you're gonna apply that remedy. Now, what if you had the remedy, and somehow your your child wouldn't take that remedy? <laughs> I know what you're gonna do. You're gonna force feed them. <laughs> All right. Uh, you're gonna do what's good for them. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on now. <laughs> now you now you understand what's going on here yeah, yeah, yeah. a little bit better. I see you trapped. To see you trapped. You want to get prepared under every good work and grow right? Or do you want to just be empowered to go do things wrong and grow wrong and then ultimately end up at the, at the end of, of your life just with just it all messed up? Don't do that. Come under the instruction, amen, amen. of the Holy Ghost. Praise God. Huh? And be gracious to recognize that he's put apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers to do most of that instruction. And guidance and reproof. Please, 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 please. Come on, be gracious enough. Be insightful enough. Cooperate enough with the church that the Lord Jesus Christ purchased with his own blood. To be able to recognize what's going on here in this place. And nobody against you. Everybody's for you. And nobody got a bad thing to say about you. We got all, all these good things that we want for you. Come on now. Huh? Please. In Jesus' name. Let that come to an end. Let that come to an end. Amen? Amen. I'm going to read this verse of scripture to you. John 17. Here it is. John said, He that has a son hath life, has the life of God. He that does not have Jesus Christ or has a son, Christ Jesus, does not have life. And the Lord Jesus says this. This is eternal life. Here it is. There's a lot of people who've got different definitions for eternal life, but here's what Jesus said eternal life is. There's a lot of people that describe different things about the results of what God did for us at Calvary, but here's what Jesus said. There's a lot of people that describe different conditions uh, of, of men's life after they experience the resurrection life, but here's what Jesus said. This is eternal life. Here's life. Here's abundant life. Here's the glorious life. Here's the life unending. The life that lasts forever, the ageless life, the good life, the best life, that you may know, that they may know you. Father, that they may know you. Everything that Jesus did in his life was to glorify the Father. Everything that Jesus did in his life was to make the Father known because he knew and knows the most glorious one that's ever existed. 
And he's so filled with love and compassion so that everyone would know him, he's willing to die for you and me so that we can know him too. And these are the last things that he said before he went and died for us. And this is eternal life. That they may know you, Father, the only true God and Jesus Christ whom you have sent. That's it. Know. See that? Know him personally. What else do you want there? Well, I'd like to have the Father and Jesus in the house in riches and fame, lots of friends, and the approval of everybody. If anybody dislikes me, I'm going to get totally upset. I want to be talked good about all the time. And if anybody talks bad about me, oh, wow, de what, what devastation. I want this thing and that thing and the other thing. I've got to have all this stuff before I can feel complete. Something's wrong. For ye are complete in him. Who is head over everything. This is eternal life, to know him. This is the life that God has made available for you and I. All we have to do is call upon the name of the Lord and then be willing to obey him and grow right and not let the deception and the lies of Satan begin to influence our life because it'll mess us up. Many people were born into religion and they never were born out of it. You listen to me. Many people, I've, listen, listen to me. I'll say it one more time. Many people are born in the religion. And the most poisonous one is the Christian religion. That's not right with God. I'm talking about religion. Huh? Protestant religion. Roman Catholic religion. Maybe that would be a better way for me to say it than say Christian. Because in Nepal, all the old Nepali people and... They neither Protestant nor Roman Catholic. They're Christian. They ch refuse to be either one. Amen. Me too. <laughs> so I said, no, no, no. You got to be one or the other. No, I don't. I'm not a Presbyterian. I'm not following Knox, who's the first protester. I'm not following him. Huh? I'm not following him. I'm following Jesus. I'm following Jesus. Hallelujah. Following the Holy Ghost. Huh? And I'm not interested in what Constantinople and Constantine and all the rest of the guys did at Constantinople and all the other people involved in that nonsense. I'm not following them either. I'm following Jesus. I'm following the Holy Ghost. I'm walking the Word. I'm going to obey God's Word. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I just got to read one other verse of scripture to you. Can I read one other verse of scripture? Yeah. This isn't some new idea with the Lord. Exodus 3.15. <laughs> the Lord says to Moses, You should say to the children of the Israel, I am the Lord God of your fathers. I am the God of Abraham. I am the God of Isaac. I am the God of Jacob. This is my name forever. This is how you will know me. What is he saying? I am the God of personal relationships with individual human beings that were willing to believe me. That's what he's saying. That's my name forever. I am the God of individual people who were willing to have a relationship with me. That's my name forever. This is eternal life. You cannot know him and not love him. And you cannot love him and not obey him. Because at once, you, once you see him, everything about him is good and you want to do it. Unless deception sticks it, kicks in. And then you're going to follow the same one who was first deceived by his own pride, Satan. Who then deceived even the mighty host, the mighty angels. How much more can he deceive you? You grab a hold of Christ Jesus. You grab a hold of this wonderful provision and protection and perfection provided for us in him Amen. come follow jesus come lay hold upon him yes. come lay hold on eternal life amen. amen stand with me i'd like to preach to you for the rest of the afternoon because i believe that uh several people have major breakthroughs if i did but i also know another way 
Right now, you can say, I'm letting go of the things that have held me back, that have stole my joy, that have robbed this glory from me. Can I say this? Would you believe me if I tell you something? How many of you would you believe me if I told you something? Raise your hand. Let me tell you this. I simply say to the Lord, Lord, let me feel your glory. And his glory comes upon me. Doesn't matter where I'm at. If I'm going to be out working in the field, if I'm in my living room at the house, if I'm driving in the car, I feel his glory. I feel his glory that some people would describe as being drunk. I feel his glory so rich, so beautiful, so heaven. I feel heaven. I feel him. His love, his joy, his peace. I'm saying to you, dear people, God has the same for you. He's no respecter of persons. You need not live in fear and torment. You not need to live in stress and discouragement, and being overwhelmed. Oh, because when you live in this place, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life cannot take you. Cannot. Cannot. Because you're complete, you feel. You're full. You're not hungry for the things of this world. You don't need something else to help you along. You sealed up to the full. Right now, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I charge you to repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Right now, by the authority of the living God, I invite you to come into this realm of, the, of heaven, to come in and know Christ Jesus, the living God, to come in to a place where all your sins are washed away by the blood of Jesus Christ. I invite you to come in to a place where the power of God will come upon you and make you a new creation and burn with the glory of His presence for the rest of your life. Amen. Father's made it very simple. All you need to do is believe. Acts 16, verse 31. A jailer. Jailers were not nice people back in the days of Paul. They were tormentors of men. They were, they were rough people who delighted in seeing other folks suffer. When the jailer encountered the power of God, he said to Paul, what must I do to be saved? Think about the condition. Think about this man. Just do a little bit of reading upon what jailers were like 2,000 years ago in Asia Minor. He encounters the power of God. Cares not for men. Has no compassion in his heart. What must I do to be saved? Look at how simple Paul made it. Believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved in your house. Oh, it defies, it defies the mind and thinking of men. That God should make it so easy. So simple. Even if you lived a whole life of sin, maybe you're 80 years old right now, and you lived a whole life of sin, God would still make it so easy for you at this moment in time. All you have to do is say a simple prayer and say, Jesus, I accept you as my Savior. I know that when you died at Calvary's cross for my sin, that you were raised up from the dead. I turn my life completely over to you to obey you, to follow you, to be led by you, to live for you. I give myself now, without reservation, take full control. You don't even have to say all that. I mark Cornelius' house. I mark Cornelius' house as an instance of a great move of God. They just said to Peter, what do you have to tell us? An angel appeared, and they were just proselyte Jews. Proselyte. Proselyte Jews. Who were not even allowed to go into the temple because they were Gentiles. They weren't even allowed to go into the courtyard because they were Gentiles. They had to stay in the court of the Gentiles. You talk about caste system. You talk about being an outsider. You talk about being a third-class citizen. Huh, they could they were lower than the, than the court of the women. You listening to me? Yes. Peter stood there, being filled with the Holy Ghost, began to tell them about Jesus Christ. Yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. How that he died at Calvary's cross. Simple message. 
the heart, the heart, the receptivity of their heart was such that the Holy Ghost came upon every one of them right there and then while he was speaking. And they all began to speak with other tongues. Wow! Wow! What a move of God! What a genuine faith! What a genuine change! What's the condition of your heart? God's made it so simple. Call out, cry out to God, and he'll save you. But look at the context. Just had an encounter with God. It wasn't just kind of believing. It wasn't, well, you know, I'm going to give this a try. You know, I tried Buddhism, Hinduism, and all the other isms. I'm going to try this one too. Just had an encounter with heaven. Come on now, rise up from the place that you've been living. Satan has drugged you down by the change of his affairs. He's imprisoned you with the cares of this life. He's robbed you with the deceitfulness of his own ways. Now rise up, now rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up, rise up. You live for Jesus from this day forward. This is the eternal life that you may know the true and the living God, the Father. The one who is the God of the individual. Who's known by his individual relationship with men like Abraham and men like Isaac and men like Jacob. <laughs> and wants to be known. This is his name forever. He wants to be known by his relationship he has with you. He wants to be known. Hallelujah. Hear me. Hear me. Hear me. He wants to be known, Robert. He wants to be known, Tyler. He wants to be known. He wants to be known. Gustavo, he wants to be known by the relationship he has with you. <laughs> Hear me. Hear me, Scotty. Michael, hear me. He wants to be known by the relationship he has with you. He wants to be revealed by the relationship he has with you. Bill, JJ, John, Jason, every one of you, put your name there. Brittany, Karen, KC, Lori. James, Sandra, Paul, Vicki, whoever you are today, every one of you, Kay, Kelly, Adam, every one of you, he wants to be known by his relationship he has with you. Just lift your hands towards him. I want to breathe on you. Breathe. Breathed on them and said, Receive. Receive. The Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord Jesus, say this Lord Jesus. From this day forward. I want to know you like never before. I want to live for you like never before. I want to walk with you like never before. You're my Lord. I'm your servant. Reveal yourself through me. Use me, Lord. Break off the sh yeah, shackles and the fetters. Break off the yokes of this city, of this region, of this nation, of the nations of this earth. I give myself to you to walk in purity, to walk in the holiness that you demand. To seek you with all my heart. To walk in this love. To walk in this joy. So that as Isaiah said. Nations will see the glory on us. And they will run to us. And they will cleave to us. Because you are seen in our midst. Father, I pray now, in Jesus' name, that the yokes will be broken off my family, 
that the yokes will be broken off the friends and acquaintances that I have. That they will come to know you because of my relationship with you. Use me, Lord. Send me, Lord. I will go for you. Use me, Lord. Let your glory flow through me. That the world around us might be saved. Amen. Now thank him because he's going to do it. Hallelujah. 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 Every yoke is broken. Every chain, every fetter is removed. Listen to me. When you walk out of this place today, you walk out different. You walk out changed. You're not confined by the things of the past. The only, the only way that that would become untrue is for you to begin to believe the lies that Satan would tell you. For you to begin to turn your heart back to the cares of this life. But right now, I'll tell you, because you stood in this place, because the power of the living God, the fire of God, and the word of God has been declared, you're completely set free. Amen. No yoke can attach itself to you. No power of death, no claim of hell has rights over you. Amen. You walk out here completely free. Now be of that mind. Be of that heart. Have that confidence. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Now I want you guys to hook up with us. We gotta, we, let's hook up together for a miracle, okay? I know that you need finances multiplied in your life. God called you to do a lot of things continually. He called you to give in five different areas of your life. He said give to the orphans. He'd give to the widows. Give to the poor that are among you. Support the local ministry and traveling ministries. That's five different dimensions of giving. Hallelujah. And he's purposed that we do it continually, not once a year. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. So obviously then, if he's so purposed that, he's going to have to resource us to do that. Amen. Amen. And when you start participating with those things that you have, God is going to multiply it and he's going to give you more. I would I advise you to make a budget for all five categories in your life. And I'd advise you to make it a bigger and more important budget than what you do to take care of yourself. Huh? Entertainment, clothes, finances for this thing, that thing, and the other, every other thing. I advise you to change. I advise you to start, start taking your life and make an inventory of it and make sure it's reconciled with what God said in His Word. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Now let's hook up together for a miracle because the, we need a miracle of provision and finances for the ministry and the things that God's got us to do in this city and the big vision and dream that he's put upon our hearts and he's enlarged it just over the past couple of weeks, past couple of months especially. And so I know that God said if you'll give, uh, what, this is what Paul said in 2 Corinthians chapter 9, he said that if you'll give, if you give sparingly, that you're still going to reap. <laughs> You reap sparingly. Hey, but it's better to have a sparing harvest than no harvest at all. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. And then the church's finances are being blessed. But he said, if you give generously, he said, if you give generously, <laughs> hallelujah. He said, if you give generously, praise God, pray every person's ears are open right now in Jesus' name. You give generously, you shall also reap generously. But don't do it because of constraint. Don't do it because you have to. Do it because this is in your heart. This is who you are. There may be people in our midst who aren't of the company of the saints. It's not in their heart. They would have to give begrudgingly. But as soon as you begin to think, take the things that God has called important and make them the most important to you, oh, you'll give generously. And you'll give not, 
Do not get begrudging on your kids joyfully and cheerfully. Bless that you're allowed to do it and watch God as he supplies all grace. And it abounds to you so that you have all sufficiency in all things to do everything that God's purpose for you to do. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. I think it's wonderful. Amen. Amen. So this is what we're going to do. I'm going to give you opportunity to come and worship the Lord. Make sure that your sacrifice is what it should be. All worship began with an offering that represented Jesus. That's how worship began. Make sure your offering today of worship represents Jesus. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. I want you to hold your offering up in the air. Hold it up in the air. Say, Lord, Lord I thank you, I thank you that, you that you have blessed me with the ability to bring this offering. The to bring this offering. And, I thank you, Lord, and I thank you, Lord, for the faith, for the faith that, produces the that produces the miraculous supply that you have promised. Amen. Amen. Now come worship the Lord with it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Find a bunch of people around you. Hug them. Tell them that you love them. Bless them in the name of Jesus. God's got so much more for you, but you've got to open up your mouth and receive. And, uh, and, and you're going to have to lift up your hands and rejoice. And so come back tonight. Come back tonight. And bring the lost and bring the sick and bring the diseased and bring the hurting. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise and watch the miracles take place. Watch signs and wonders take place. Hallelujah. Turn up a little bit. Oh, What's your name? Farley. Hmm? Farley. Farley? Yes, Fa Father, we thank you for Farley's life. Lord, bless him right now. Pray him in the name of Jesus. From the crown of his head to the soles of his feet. Father, I thank you for your life, for your peace, for your grace. I thank you for grace.